I've been using thinking routines for several years. This year is the first year I've actually used them effectively, and, and they literally have changed the way my students work and think. So I can't overstress that. Thinking routines really, really work. And I guess we, we talk a lot as teachers about strategies in the classroom. Most strategies are just techniques to get through this kind of a lesson, and they're really not strategies at all. Thinking routines are a strategy that will change your students forever. Um, they come from Project Zero. This is a shot of their website. It's a group that's been working at Harvard for about 50 years. And I have examples of my students before we were using thinking routines routinely. It's about to show up right here, really hard to read. But it's a student describing, like, why does something fall slower? And he said, oh, it falls slower because it takes more time, right? Uh, so it's like his, his reason is the same as his observation. And the next slide talks about, you know, why is this happening? Well, it's happening, I actually got the slides backwards, but okay. They said, well, the reason this is happening is because we use regular balloons and regular air. And it's like, it's really vague. So students, without being taught how to think, actually are very vague. They're just scratched the surface. Now, this year, I had students completely on their own coming with an explanation. Why is this falling slower? Well, it's falling slower because the wing is wider. It's intercepting more air molecules. That's pushing up on it more. Okay, they're getting into a real description here that they can actually test. These are a student, after giving a lab where I asked them to take spinach leaves and put them in a container with a CO2 detector for 10 minutes with light, 10 minutes in the dark, and she got her data, and then she started thinking, like, what's going on here? What might be causing this? She spent four pages discussing what was happening and where she wanted to go with it. So the thinking has become way deeper, and it happened because we use these every day. The biggest problem I had to implement this as a teacher is, like, I wanted to use all of them. I learned, read this book, Making Thinking Visible, about four years ago, got all excited about it, and the problem is, is there are too many thinking routines. This is for making thinking visible, okay? Um, I don't even know how many there are there. There's a lot. We tried, I had worked with a couple other students here at Lighthouse. We tried to implement it and we just, it wasn't working and it's because there was too much. We were too scattered. Agency by Design, also from Project Zero, added five more thinking routines. Also super useful, but that was five more on top of everything else I was trying to do. So. It finally hit me this year with the Agency by Design workshops is that it says thinking routine. That means routinely, every day. And I did that by just narrowing down what I deal with. So I, I use see, think, wonder like this, what we call a poik, which is, you know, predict, observe, infer, and question. We do this every lab. Then we dig deeper. We develop an inner critic in our own heads. So every thought I've got might be right, might be wrong. So we use what makes you see that in parts, purposes, and complexities to push our thinking deeper. And finally, we put it all together, either using concept maps or sometimes we'll use a model by list. Some students like long lists of information. Some students like pictures and connections. So this is up to the students which one they want to use. They always have to tell me what they're thinking. And once again, we use them all the time. I asked one student on Monday, you know, how often have you used thinking routines? And she said, Mr. Crandall, I filled out two points and it's not even Tuesday yet. Um, they know we're going to use these all the time. And, and to begin with, <laughs> the students will resist. They told me, this isn't science, Mr. Crandall, this is a cult. Um, and it was this young gentleman who said that. Uh, they played around with that for about two weeks, and then they just got into the routine. And all the time now, we are using the thinking routines. Um, we're writing them down in a journal. They actually know I'm reviewing their journals. They think I'm looking for very specific, I'm not. I'm looking to see that they're thinking independently. This is, I have rubrics for how well they use the thinking routine. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for these independent thinking. I'm looking for, are you questioning yourself? I have lessons on how to do that. So it's not, this doesn't happen naturally. We did a lot of poiks, as I call them, with the whole class involved, where everyone was sharing out their ideas, and I just filled them out on the whiteboard, and then they'd move into the work doing it in their own journals. I've had lessons on how to improve your poiks. So how to ask yourself deeper questions and develop that inner voice. But it really comes down to this. These things really work. You need to limit the number you're using so you can use them routinely, and then you just need to use them routinely. <laughs> and you will end up with these amazing independent learners in action who are willing to share their ideas with one another. They will discuss their ideas with one another. They're not afraid of their own thinking anymore. And it is truly amazing.